بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة المتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا ورسولنا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم أما بعد أي الأحباب which deed is the best to Allah Azza wa Jal and we mentioned prior to this that Iman Billah believing in Allah Azza wa Jal and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam being the best of deeds and no doubt that Tawheed and following the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is what our deen is built upon is what the religion of Islam is built upon let's listen to this narration by the great Imam Muhaddith Alam Rabbani Imam Nisa'i rahimahullah ta'ala said in, in his sunan قال أخبرنا هارون بن عبد الله قال حدثنا حجاج بن قال حدثنا حجاج عن ابن جريج قال حدثنا عثمان بن أبي سليمان عن علي الأزدي عن عبيد بن عمير عن عبد الله بن حبشي الخشعمي أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم سئل أي الأعمال أفضل فقال الإيمان لا شك فيه وجهاد لا غلول فيه وحجة مبرورة إسناده حسن It was narrated from Abdullah bin Hubshi al Khathami that the Messenger of Allah, the Prophet وسلم, was asked, which deed is best? He said, faith in which there is no doubt, jihad in which there is no ghulul, and hajj al-mabrur, and it was graded Hassan. In this hadith, the Prophet والسلام, illustrates for us the importance of sincerity to Allah and Iman Billah, as we mentioned, that you should be sincere in your belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we know that a part of all of our good deeds and all of our deeds to be accepted in Islam is that they have to have the two conditions. One is sincerity to Allah that you worship Him and Him alone. And the second one is that it has mutaba' meaning it's following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And so here in this hadith, the Prophet said, which deed is best? He said, faith in which there is no doubt. So again, as a part of our iman, and even the testimony of faith, one of the conditions is that you have, along with sincerity, that you have, that you're truthful, or that you have surety, which negates doubtfulness. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ said, faith in which there is no doubt. So that you believe that Allah exists, you believe that Allah is the only one worthy of worship, and you put your trust in Him, and you have no doubt in that. And may Allah protect us from the whisperings of the shaitan, wa shayateen, from mankind in jinn, ameen, ya rabbil alameen. And then he said, jihad in which there is no ghulul, meaning the jihad which is free from people pilfering from the spoils of war prior to them being presented to the commander for proper distribution. So people raiding the war booty, so to speak. And the last thing the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, as which uh, being the best of deeds, he said, Hajj Mabrur meaning the hajj which is accepted, a hajj which is free from sin, 
And there are many authentic hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which affirm this for us. And since there are many narrations which mention about the best deeds, the way the scholars reconcile between those various narrations is that the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam, he responded in each of those situations in accordance with the conditions and keeping in mind the questioner. And that shows the fiqh of the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam, in his hikmah. And that is a beautiful example for us to follow that when people ask us questions or when we listen to questions and answers presented to the ulama and the answers from the ulama that we gain insight in accordance with their various levels of fiqh and understanding on how they answer questions because the fiqih the alim will take in and the, the, the mufti will take in consideration the questioner, the condition of the questioner and the surrounding circumstances before making a fatwa. And this is why a qaida fiqhi that the ulama mention is al hukum ala shay far'in ala tasawarihi that when making a ruling on something, a judgment, a part of that ruling is a proper understanding of the situation. For example, so that way we have insight into what is being talked about here. If we ask one of the scholars about a situation in America, for example, that we have to present because that scholar may have never been to America, may have never encountered or have a background or an understanding of the culture of the people and so forth. So before that mufti, before that individual gives a fatwa about a particular set of circumstances or even an individual even, they have to have a correct understanding of what they're being asked about and the people asking the question and the potential uh, intent of the people asking the question. Are they asking it because they want to know the truth? Are they asking it because they want to spread evil and they want to sp they want to make something haram or whatever the situation may be? So part of the fiqh and understanding is a proper understanding of what is being asked and the situation and the background behind it. And this is what the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam possessed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favored him with this, this hikmah and this the you know this wisdom. And this insight in Basira and Ilm. And these are just some of the benefits we gain from this hadith. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our iman and protect us from any and all forms of evil.